welcome to Medica Nova Wellness Studio. I'm Dr. Angelica Maria Koch with the educational videos about optimal health and the most innovative and holistic approach to your well-being. In today's video, let's explore how you can manage and heal phlebitis with natural and effective therapeutic tools. Now, if you check out my playlist of Medica Nova Wellness Studio, you see that in the past I featured a video about varicose veins. But in this video, I want to focus mainly on the condition of phlebitis. Phlebitis means your veins are swollen and inflamed. It's quite a common condition. It can be from mild to severe, depending on its location and cause. Early treatment is here really advised because you want to prevent complications. In the early stages, alternative medicine offers fantastic solutions. And you also can have a combination of conventional medicine and alternative medicine. All works here. So enjoy this video. To stay updated with more ongoing videos, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, share and like it with your friends and families, and don't forget to click that bell as it notifies you every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for your thumbs ups and your likes as they do help the growth of my channel. Have a look at my website medicanova.net at the online academy where you will find comprehensive certified home study online courses in homeopathy for the whole family, health and wellness coaching, quantum healing, mental health and so much more. I also recently updated the entire wellness packages that you can purchase at Medicanova. Uh, one is called the Cellular Detox System. It's one of the most advanced and well-researched detoxification systems on the market right now. You can get it for 25% discount at Medicanova. Uh, we also recently launched a three months holistic smoking cessation program. So if you're interested in, the, in that, contact MedHealth at Medicanova.net. But what is phlebitis? Well, as already mentioned, the term phlebitis means an inflamed and swollen vein. However, the condition is usually broken into more specific types of inflamed veins. But whatever the type, phlebitis should be always evaluated by your physician and healthcare provider since people with one kind of condition may develop also more serious you know sort of forms so it's really good to get here the right treatment let's take a look at the types of phlebitis the first one is superficial phlebitis and it affects the veins at the surface of the skin. It's the easiest to treat. And this video will mainly focus on the first stages. So that's where the home treatment comes in. We also have deep phlebitis. And as the name already says, it affects veins in the deeper and larger vein. Often you can find them in the legs and as well in the arms. And then we have superficial thrombophlebitis. And here thrombo means, okay, now we have a blood clot. But again, the vein is swollen in a vein near the skin surface. And it's called a superficial blood clot. And then we have the fourth stage, which is deep vein thrombophlebitis. And here again, we have a blood clot, but which goes deeper now, affecting more the larger veins. It is more the serious type um, because here when the blood clot breaks away from its location and then travels maybe towards the lungs, you know, the end result could be pulmonary embolism. We don't want that. That's why it's good to check it out, what's actually happening. Remember that the name or the term thrombosis and a deep vein thrombophlebitis is not the same. Thrombosis, sure, it's a blood clot, but there's no swelling involved. So make sure that you understand the terms. In cases of superficial inflammation, phlebitis can often be treated very well at home after the evaluation of your physician. Treatment usually takes from one to two weeks. Sometimes, you know, we 
they're all individual. Um, the recovery takes a little bit longer, but we have good, good tools here. What are the symptoms? Depending if it's caused by an injury or an IV injection or just by a sedentary lifestyle, sometimes you see this long, thin red area. It's almost like a streak happening on the surface of the skin. And I put a picture up so you have a good visual here as well. The area feels warm and tender to touch. And also, you, when you touch it, there may be sort of a cord-like, rope-like feeling, maybe a lumpy sensation going on under the skin. Often you have this feeling of a throbbing. You know, the circulation isn't happening very well, so you have the throbbing sensation, burning may be happening. Uh, some experience more itchiness around this area. It's definitely worse when you get out of bed and you flex the joint uh, or even when the legs just hang down, they're not elevated. Others maybe experience some fever, but that's more rare here. There are technical causes which can create phlebitis. <clears throat> that can be from an injury, maybe um, you know, fractured bone in your leg and you were in the cast for a long time, surgery, contusion, also infections. I mentioned IV injections. Or if you have a history of uh, previous phlebitis, inactivity, sedentary lifestyle, sitting too long at the computer, traveling, you know, on airplanes for many hours, um, you know, where, where we don't have really a movement and circulation is hindered, and of course blood clots. The risk factors in general, as I said, inactivity, sedentary lifestyle, but also family history, you know, of blood clots. Here I also want to mention pregnancy, childbirth, um, forceps delivery, uh, birth control, hormone replacement therapies, they all can add to that as well. Don't forget your weight. Obesity, you know, really has a huge impact on the valves and the elasticity on the valves of your veins. Others, um, maybe who have to have long-term catheter in a blood vessel, that could be a cause of it. And then, of course, chronic diseases like blood disorders, lupus, autoimmune uh, diseases and conditions. Don't forget smoking. Smoking has a huge impact on your venous circulation. And just basics, varicose veins. And that's what this video is really about. What would be the conventional treatment? It's painful. So you get some anti-inflammatory drugs, but also blood thinners. And here we talk about aspirin or warfarin or another selection of medication. If there's a skin infection involved, maybe antibiotics will be suggested. Definitely warm compressors on the external part, um, wearing um, compression stockings, of course, and surgery maybe. Um, you know, suggested in more chronic cases. If you have a blood clot, you maybe have to stay in hospital for a few days and then after sort of some assessment, you can go home, so it's not a big deal. But here's an important point. If you are already on blood thinners, like warfarin, for example, and you include now or start herbal therapies, um, please, um, give that information to your physician because there can be a complication here. They maybe don't match with each other and we don't want to antidote um, the effectiveness of your medication already. So particularly with warfarin, so that's really important. If you're interested in a health consultation either for yourself and or your children, contact me at Medicanova at health at Medicanova.net. Medicanova is my practice for integrated and educational medicine. 
we offer a unique blend of natural and cutting-edge therapeutic tools from homeopathy, iridology, sclerology, systemic herbology, advanced biofeedback, and health and wellness coaching, and so much more. Book your appointment today. Let's move into the second part of this video called Food for Thought, the metaphysical meaning. You know, you got at YouTube, uh, you find tons, tons of videos about how to treat varicose veins, and they're all valuable. But I'm a healthcare practitioner who also looks at the totality of your symptoms. I'm not just here to give you some tools how to, you know, maybe superficially even just a band-aid uh, solution for your varicose veins. I want to go deeper. I want to see if there's a story on your mental emotional um, aspects as well. You know, what is hindering the circulation of your life? You know, what or who is uh, in your mind even, you know, just the belief system is stopping you to be in the flow. And uh, as you know, there's a mind-body connection. So I want to give you some tips, some inspiration to go a little bit deeper inside yourself and see a part, of course, I mean, if you had an IV injection and then you had a phlebitis coming up, that is a, a technical cause, right? Or, or if you have a sedentary lifestyle, but maybe there's a little bit more behind and I just want to give you a kind invitation here to go a little bit deeper. So here I refer to Jacques Martel references and he says phlebitis is defined by a blocking of blood in the veins, mainly in the lower limbs, caused by a blood clot induced by an immobilization, maybe a plaster cast, as I said, a varicose pathology or a blood hypercoagulation. So blood in itself, you know, it's something fluid. It represents free circulation of life in the veins of my lower limbs. My means of locomotion is therefore limited, right? It's irritated and defective because this blocking of blood indicates to me a loss of joy related particular to the legs which transport me toward the different destinations in my life. So here we get a keynote already. It, it's about movement, it's about being in the flow, it's about circulation. Right? In your mind, is there a belief system which stops you to be in the flow? Is there a situation, your work situation, your spouse, your marriage, your children, whatever, whoever, who you think stops your circulation. Phlebitis appears when I experience a brutal event. It has to be you know, quite strong here. In my life that gives me a great feeling of confusion and limits my freedom. I feel like biting someone enough to make them bleed. Right? That's the verbal expression. You feel like biting someone enough to make them bleed. And that's what happens with the varicose veins. They start to bleed. They are biting in nature. They're burning. They're painful. And as the blood is no longer flowing back upwards in my legs, I feel compelled to pump up the spirits of someone, like somebody outside of you, they, he says it can be your husband even, or your wife whose morale is always low, right? Brings you down and you want to bring up the circulation, you want to bring up the motivation, and who sees everything darkly. Depending on whether it is the left leg, which is usually represented more mirrored into your inner self, or the right leg, which is then the outer self, or both legs, the loss of joy will identify for me at what level or in what direction I hesitate or refuse to advance to accept a new destination. 
right? Is it the inner or the outer or both? Or, you know, where do I uh, sabotage myself in order to be in the flow? I fret about certain situations that life presents me with. I therefore experience a stopping, right? A slowing down because of an emotion. A feeling that limits my joy, my pleasure in living. I may experience frustration with my sexuality. I tend to blame others. I despise them. I hold them responsible for the deprivations and I may be experiencing or for taking away my joy in living and moving forward, right? You know, we often project it on the outside. We often say, well, this circumstance or this person has treated me like that and that's why I feel like that, right? Um, it's, not, it's not it. It's like, sure, I'm not saying that someone hasn't done bad to you or has affected you, but it's your relationship to this event. It's your response to this event which really determines if your body starts expressing its symptomatology. So the keynote here is really to take back your power, right? And really work on that very thing which the other one mirrored just inside of you. I feel unsteady on my legs, right? I'm unstable. My doubts weigh heavily. I feel powerless. Do I deserve to be even happy? I feel that I'm marking time, that nothing is moving. Or should it be that this is actually what I want? It could be a good thing too, but you don't like it. If you're in a cast and you had a fracture and you're lying on the sofa now for the next few weeks or months, you hate it, right? That's not life, but hey, there is a silver li lining. Maybe this time allows you to reflect what's going on in your life. Maybe you finally can read the book which is on your shelf for months and you never had time to really, uh, really enjoy reading. So what's the positive affirmation? It means I accept to let go of the sadness, the discontent and the frustration that I'm experiencing and to act responsible. Here that's three times underlined responsible for what happens in my life. You're not really feeling constantly the victim of your situation. You really say, okay, something is stagnating in my life. What can I do about it? You know, is there anybody I can ask for help? You know, maybe I can educate myself about how to be in the flow again. Now, However, I must accept that I have a right also to happiness and that I deserve to have joy and peace. Um, you know, you have to illuminate your own inner road here. I turn back to myself and at the heart of life and truth. Right? We all have a you know, not so easy time right now. Right now we're going to go through the eclipses here, astrologically speaking. It's springtime. Um, the world is completely falling apart, right? depression, anxiety is through the roof, but we can't always blame the outside for it. You know, you are your own creator, you have all the tools you need in order to create a beautiful life, even if it's on a smaller scale. If you're interested in a health consultation, either for yourself and or your children, contact me at Medicanova at health at Medicanova.net. Medicanova is my practice for integrated and educational medicine. We offer a unique blend of natural and cutting edge therapeutic tools from homeopathy, iridology, sclerology, systemic herbology, advanced biofeedback, and health and wellness coaching, and so much more. Book your appointment today. So let's talk about the natural therapies. Now, once you had your proper evaluation and the treatment plan for a possible deep blood clot, or maybe you need antibiotics because of the infection, 
there are ways you can improve and manage your phlebitis from home and this is what this video is about. The first one will be you really need to pay attention to elevate your legs on a regular basis. You soothe the pain, you know, you really bring down the inflammatory response. And that means you have to bring up your legs quite often above your heart. Maybe externally you want to bring in warm compresses. Um, it involves sort of putting a warm wet compresses on your affected arm. Needs to be a little bit heavy as well, so there's some pressure involved because it helps to relieve the pain, reduce the inflammation and improves the circulation. Others like ice cubes or ice packages. Exercise is here very, very important, especially with superficial thrombophlebitis. R maintain regular activities. Right? This is like, uh, in this case, it not only relieves the pain, but it prevents um, the formation of blood clots. Avoid standing for long periods of time. Like teachers, you know, in the classroom, surgeon who stand for hours, you know, um, and in the operation uh, theater. It's quite common that they experience varicose veins or phlebitis. In, even when you sit, you know, try to keep your legs in motion. And the best I can uh, advice here is an Ayurvedic exercise here where if this is the sole of your foot you stand on your tippy toes lift up your heel and then go down again and then pull up your toes and you can do that even sitting up down up down up down that really improves your circulation and prevents blood clots tighten and release your calf sometimes, you know, go into the constriction and then tighten them again. Change your position and stretch frequently. Also you can, um, you know, when you lie on the floor and you go right with your butt against a wall, you elevate your legs, it's really soothing and the blood flows back to the heart. Do that several times a day, that really is wonderful. I also advise compression stocking. You can get them anywhere, right? In your pharmacy, online, Amazon, whatever. They're, you know, you can have them with um, polka dots or different colors, or you can make fun with that as well. But they're really good, and you can have them below the knee or right up to your thigh, depending where you feel the congestion. My advice is to start with 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury first because the more um, tighter weaves, um, they can be quite, um, quite constrictive and maybe uncomfortable. So start with that first. Shoes. I also recommend um, have a look at your shoes. Right? Maybe you need some orthopedic inserts. It's not good to walk around barefoot at home when you have this phlebitis really uh, bring in shoes with a good sort of foundation and supports your stance. Also support um, maybe leg massages for circulation. You can use them um, at home as well as in your office and they're really effective. Very advised as well here again you can get them online. With it, I would also suggest natural supplements. And, you know, yes, you have the anti-inflammatory drugs and the blood thinners, but as I said, it's very important that you um, really discuss that with your physician if these herbal supplements um, don't contraindicate with your blood thinner medication. But a randomized controlled study found that vitamin B's, um, folic acid, may help reduce the blood clotting by lowering levels of homocysteine in the blood. So we have here maybe vitamin B12, vitamin B6, all this is important. I swear on certain herbs. 
And in this case, sure, that we have turmerics, we have cayenne, which contains capsin, maybe cinnamon, but I like garlic capsules here. Um, really quite a lot, maybe two to three times a day. Garlic thins the blood in a natural form. Of course, we have fever, few ginseng, and ginkgo biloba and all of that, but just start with garlic. Uh, Chinese uh, herbal preparation, often they have um, kangen kaju or bakfun pill or bifen one, as well as hulisan tablets. Um, they help very well with phlebitis as well. My combination in my practice would be garlic and the red vine leaf, which is Vitis vinivera. And um, butcher's prune, yes, so and so, but sometimes it can be a little bit too much. Absolutely horse chestnuts is Aesculus hippocastanum. It's one of my favorite because it really helps to improve um, the chronic venous insufficiency and the circulation, the itching and the swelling. So my favorites are garlic, red vine leaf and horse chestnut. Um, others um, swear maybe on wild pansy, but that's not my experience. I want to give you advice which worked in my practice and not just a general overview. Um, so. I swear on horse chestnut, um, red vine leaf, as well as garlic. Now, phlebitis in general has to do, or there's a link between a weakened liver. So that's why it becomes more a total and comprehensive treatment plan. And here, if you deal with liver issues, you want to look maybe at a supplement called Tutka. And that is um, a bile salt and also often uh, mixed up with milk thistle, which is a wonderful um, liver detox herb. So I can um, advise this as well. Um, it helps with the liver enzymes, immune system, the gallbladder, as well as your thyroid health, tutka. Diet is here very important. Phlebitis is an irritation of the veins lining and although a supportive diet may not make an immediate difference in your symptoms, but it really is helpful in the long term. Uh, we want to, from now on, start supporting your vessels to become strong and healthy again. And when paired with other ways to prevent phlebitis, as I mentioned, you know, with the external and the applications and the supplements, and in a minute I will talk about homeopathic remedies, you can prevent the blood clots, you know, and a supportive diet is here key here as well. So we want to bring in high fiber, you know, whole grains, fruits, veggies, legumes, nuts, and seeds. So let's move to the third part of this video, homeopathic remedies. In my videos, I want to give you the understanding what phlebitis is really about. I want to look at lifestyle changes. We want to look at natural supplements. And we also want to look at individual targeted treatment plans, in this case, homeopathic remedies. Homeopathy for varicose veins and phlebitis um, is very effective because it has no side effects, unlike conventional treatments here. And here we talk about, you know, varicose veins treatments, which I didn't want to go into in this video. But these medicines for varicose veins are made of natural substances, are highly diluted, yet very potent. And they work to prevent the backflow of the blood in the vein due to this deep acting effect in basic procedures often can be held off. Right? You maybe don't need a surgery. They're made from natural substances and I would say homeopathy really helps to treat the condition on the long-term basis and that's really what we want. Once you know you go on a homeopathic protocol for quite some time the chances of the condition uh, recurring again is quite actually slim. 
And unlike conventional treatment, homeopathy therefore offers long-term relief from the symptoms and not just a band-aid situation. As I said, I made already a video in the past about varicose veins, but and I put the description in the uh, in the box below, so you have a more really good understanding of our varicose veins and in this case phlebitis. But for more guidance and um, how to take these remedies, please contact my website uh, medicanova.net. Uh, Mediconova, you can also contact me at health at mediconova.net to book your appointment. And of course, always you know, consult with your physician and your local homeopath. So let's talk about remedies which you can get in your health food store or online. And here I want to focus on the early phase of a superficial phlebitis of the lower limbs can be in their arms as well, but most of the time people experience it in the lower limbs. So we talked about the sensation of throbbing. The skin is very red, it's hot to touch, and the first remedy in line comes is called Belladonna. Belladonna means the beautiful woman, right? Bella and Donna. But the symptoms are sudden, sudden onset. That's the keynote here. You have the redness and the swelling, and often the pain is quite pulsating. Um, intense radiant heat with this burning sensation. That is the keynote. Um, online, as well as over the counter in your health food store, you get the potency 30. That it's the number behind the name of the remedy. Sometimes you get 6, 6C, or 30C. 30C would be more appropriate here. In an acute situation, I would take one tablet every two to three hours, even, even one to two hours if it's really strong, and then space out the intakes uh, as soon as improvement sets in. On the other hand, if you have phlebitis, uh, where you see this pinkish red oedematous inflammation, it means now we have a swelling, like a bulge coming up or there's some, you know, behind the knees, you have this swelling coming up. The burning pain, stinging pain. Apis mellifica, 30C, would be the right indication here. In homeopathy, you will have success if you can recognize your individual keynote symptom and match it with the keynote symptom of the indicated remedy. Then you have the breakthrough. Right? And that's why I give you the keynotes. Belladonna works when you have the throbbing pain, lots of heat, you touch the skin, it's really inflamed. Apis, on the other hand, has the swelling. And you have, sure, the burning sensation as well, but look for this edema. There may be puritus involved, means itching as well. Same dosage plan, one tablet every, you know, one to two hours in acute dose or two to three hours and then space it out more once improvement sets in and then really stop taking more tablets, review with your physician. Another homeopathic remedy which we use for phlebitis is Vipera Berus 30C. This remedy you maybe have to um, you know, order online, you will not get it in your health food store. And here we see a very inflamed venous dilation. There's a lot of pain and the feeling is almost like the leg is bursting, aggravated by letting the leg hang vertically uh, or down, improved by raising it. That's the keynote here. Um, again, same dosage plan as with Belladonna and Apis. If you see a local purple aspect right around your vein area the remedy is lachesis muta 30c we call it echimotic it's a sort of small bruise caused by the blood now leaking from the broken blood vessel into the tissues of the skin or even the mucous membrane but it's very painful there's also we call it hyper 
aesthetic vein, which means you're very sensitive around the vein. It's aggravated by heat, so, you know, warm compressors wouldn't work here. It makes it even worse, as well as by touch. So if you see a purplish discoloration, lachesis would be the remedy here. Now, if the phlebitis is caused by an injury, like a direct trauma or after exertion maybe, um, inflammation indeed is therefore accompanied by this bruised feeling. You know, the pain is bruised, maybe stiff, the muscles are aching, and it's definitely worse by the slightest touch. The remedy would be Arnica Montana, and here would even bring in at potency 200C. Arnica, like Vipera, can be taken systematically in superficial phlebitis. So if you want to do more of a, a sort of long-term treatment, often would do Arnica 30, maybe morning and evening for a week, and then switch it off the next week with Vipera bearers morning and evening, and then switch back to Arnica for a while and see how that works. But as I said, contact me and I'm very happy to help. So that was the first stage. But what about uh, remedies which are more indicated for the resolution phase of superficial phlebitis of the lower limb? So you had the acute situation and now you want to bring in more of a long-term treatment. in order to avoid the reoccurrence. Right? That's the idea here. We want to start about prevention as well, not just you know, deal with the acute situation. I talked about Arnica Montana as well as with Vipera. That would be a wonderful uh, treatment plan to start with. Remember, Vipera bearers has these heavy legs and it's relieved by raising um, the lower limbs and it's aggravated by letting them hang down. I also like here to bring in Hamamelis vigiana, which is witch hazel. It's also um, when you go to your drugstore, get a witch hazel um, gel. It cools the inflamed um, a venous circulation on the external side very well, but in the homeopathic form, we have um, the remedy called Hamamelis. And here you feel this bruised bursting in the veins like Vipera. It's often aggravated by heat as well, so warm compressors won't help here very much. So often you find it more in the thighs, and the back of the thighs here, there may be hard and a knotty swelling. And the keynote here, that the legs become quite tired. You know, you feel fatigued with that. There's pain in the varicose veins from the slightest motion um, is another feature soreness in the varicose veins and there can be an engorgement of the blood in the veins. For the long term I would take Hamamelis 30C, maybe one tablet two to three times a day, maybe do that for 10 days, have a little break maybe for a week and start again. Pulsatilla nigricans is a wonderful remedy here as well. It's the windflower and here we have often strong, painful shooting pains. It's accompanied by, we call it, erythrocyanosis of the extremities. That means that there is a reddish-blue discoloration of the skin due to cold exposures. You see that often in young girls, not so much in, way, uh, in men, that the extremities or the toes become quite sort of like bluish looking and um, the circulation isn't working very well. So that would really help uh, in the overall constitution as well. Um, have I forgotten anything? No, the next remedy in line would be Calcara Fluoroca uh, 30C. 
And here we see this indurated varicose veins. That means now we have the rope-like indication. Uh, it looks quite ugly as well. By then you probably, you know, go and have a surgery. Um, but that would be a nice one to calc fluor. And I think the last remedy I would like to mention is fluorochim uh, acidum. It's more when the varicose start to itch. Right, there's burning sensation in the legs. Um, usually, again, worse by heat, better by cold application like ice cubes. Um, Fluorochisum acidum is a wonderful remedy here. Um, but I hope today's video has given you more um, motivation and inspiration to find out more natural solutions. There's a lot you can do from home, right? but it takes willingness, it takes some work, and I'm here to guide you in the most, hopefully, professional way. So if you are in need of more guidelines, schedule your appointment with Medicanova at health at medicanova.net. I'm happy to help here. Also, take a look at my website, medicanova.net, at the online academy where you will find the comprehensive certified home study online courses. We have a course called Thriving with Homeopathy. It's a practical guide for the whole family and beyond, where I will teach you how to use remedies for common situations. We look at the digestive system, the respiratory system, the skin ailments, right? So you feel more confident how to use these remedies with your first aid kit um, among your loved ones, your family, your friends, and hopefully, most of all, uh, for yourself. I also mentioned that uh, we now updated the website, medicanova.net, at the wellness packages. We have now female health, thyroid health, um, the microbiome, the gastrointestinal, uh, wonderful health packages, as well as the cellular detox system. And till next time, much love. Keep in the flow of life. Mm -hmm.